G'day coppers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Arms for All Driving, I'm here with Dave and his 200 series and he's breaking a CV. So we're gonna change it out. Let's get into it. So a couple of quick words about how we're set up here. So we've got a jack stand there. And it's also on a jack at the back there, but never rely on just a jack. You can also see we put the spare tire that we've taken off here underneath the vehicle as well. You need a bit of redundancy. We've also put it in low range and locked the center differential. If you don't understand why we've locked the center differential, click the link up above and check out that you can actually push a vehicle off a jack, a full-time four-wheel drive like the 200 series, if you don't lock the center differential. So anytime you jack up a 200 series or any full-time four-wheel drive, make sure you lock the center differential. So now we've got it all secured up. First things first, take the dust cap off. And you'll need a cold chisel or a screwdriver or something and just work your way around until it's all the way off. Now with the dust cap off, we can start pulling this split pin out. All right, so we'll just straighten this one out and then we'll pull him out. Now, these are usually a single-use component. Obviously, if you're out on the tracks, you don't have a spare, you can reuse it. But if you're at home, grab another split pin. And then, pull off the little indexing cover. Now for the nut. Now, the next step is to remove this nut. Now, this is an unusual size. It's actually a, a 39 mil, but not only that, it's a 12-point nut. And if you're gonna get an impact 39 mil, 12 mil nut, they're a bit unusual. So you probably wanna sort that out uh, and keep it as a spare in your vehicle. Now, if you don't have an impact like this, the best way to do this is to grab a breaker bar. Don't use a ratchet, because you'll break that. And then, this is a high lift jack handle. Use that as a, an extension, and then break it off. Now, the problem is, of course, can you take your foot off the brake, please, Dave? This is gonna spin. So what you'll need to do, because your CV is not connected at the other end now because it's broken, is get your mate to put your foot on the brake. So what we'll do is we'll grab the impact and we're going to need all the ugga duggers we can get for this one. So I'll put it on hard hit. Now can you put your foot on the brake please Dave? She's on yet? Beautiful. And then we'll spin it off. Now it's not gonna be that easy if you do it manually. But because we've got an impact that doesn't like to take no for an answer, not too bad to get off. These are torqued in two stages to 340 Newton meters. So if you're looking for a torque wrench to do these up properly, 340 Newton meters is what you're looking for. But we'll explain that in more detail later. Next up, we've got two bolts either side of the knuckle under here, and we're gonna buzz them off. They're 22 mil. And again, I'm going to use the Yugga Dugga, but you might have to use the cheetah bar. That's one done. Put him aside. And we'll just get the one on the other side. Nice and simple. So the next thing we've done is we've actually put in a ratchet strap up to our brush bar here. But in order to make sure we're not putting too much tension on this brake line, We've just disconnected it from here. Now we can get our CV out nice and easily. But we'll show you around the other side how we get the CV out from the spindle end. Now, to get out what's left of the drive shaft, you don't want to go bashing on here with a hammer because you'll damage the threads, especially if you're going to reuse the CV if you're pulling it out to replace a seal or whatever. So get your nut, put him on backwards. Now, if you don't have a copper-faced hammer like this, put something there, get a bit of hardwood or a piece of aluminium or something softer than that because you don't want to damage it. And then once you've got that down reasonably flush, you should be able to bang it out. Just about flush now. We might need to convince that out. So we've got a brass drift, and we're just gonna move it the rest of the way. That 
There we go. <laughs> and that's the offending CB. And as you can see, it's not happy up this end. All right, now we've got the outer done, we have to remove the inner. Now, to get this inner CV out, the easiest way is to get behind it, and I'll show you once it's out, we've actually loosened it already, either side of the shaft on the inside, and lever it up, or lever it down and push against it to pull the CV out. And this one we've already loosened up, but we might have to get under there and actually give it a final flick out. All right, so we've left it out. You want to minimise the amount of time that the CV is out to minimise the amount of oil lose. So we've lubricated this end up, just a bit of grease, and we're going to carefully jam it in that hole. Now that's seated, I'll show you how to seat it properly. All right, so you put your CV in as straight as you can, and then give them a tap on the end. Again, we put the nut on the end here. until she drops all the way in. So I won't tell lies. <laughs> Dave's longer arms obviously have more mechanical advantage than mine do. And uh, just keep pushing it in like that. You might need to give it a tap on the end. And now it's dropped in. Now it's in, we can put it into the disc brake there. Okay, now to put the spindle back into the hub assembly. So I'll take our nut off. Now when you're putting it in, it's of paramount importance not to damage these leading threads here done it before it takes ages to fix with a, with a fine file try to avoid that try and put it in as cleanly as possible we'll put a bit of grease on there if you do have access to a bit of anti seize that's not a bad idea so we'll pull this out and we'll see we can line it up and slide it in I might actually take this ratchet strap off first So now we've got the end of the CV spindle here poking through. We'll clean that off as best we can, get any dust or dirt off there. Clean off the nut. And we'll run this on there hopefully nice and easily. Oh, it does, it goes on nice and easily, which is always a great thing. We'll grab our 39 mil and put it on the end of our impact. Thanks, Dave. We'll put our ugga dugger on the smaller setting. and we'll just slowly run him in. And if it's not going in, work out why it's not going in. Don't just keep running it in with the ugga dugga. I'll put that on number two. Okay, so we've run him in all the way. Now the factory manual says 250 newton meters on the first go, from memory. Around about that sort of uh, thing, and then 350 on the second go. So you do it up reasonably tight, back it off, and then do it up tight again. Again, if you're doing it um, manually, using a breaker bar, get your mate to put your foot on the brake. Okay, so we've done it up reasonably tight. We'll back him off. And we'll do them again. Just to make sure she's seated in all the way. And I'll actually try that using a breaker bar and a handle. All right, Dave, can you put your foot on the brake, please? Yeah. Right, yeah. That's pretty tight, and we'll go with that. Again, if you have access to a torque wrench that goes up to 350 Newton meters, I think it is. I'll put a correction down there. If it isn't with the factory service manual, do that. Now we need to uh, put the split pin and the cover back on here. Now for the split pin. Of course, you need to put the locking tab over the top there. 
Now hopefully that lines up <laughs> with the hole. If it doesn't, just rotate it around. Grab your spare split pin. Of course, straighten out the old one if you don't have a spare split pin, but hopefully you've got a spare there. Pop him through. Then we need to bend him back, so. Grab the top half. over the top like that and then shorten off the back half shoot your mate in the knee with one of those and just push him home right here now the dust cap Uh, all that's left to do is the bottom couple of bolts here and we'll do them now. All right, last two is these two bolts under here. Now, it can be a bit of a bad all line and you don't want to just send it with a nugget dugger because you'll cross thread into here. So make sure that they're actually in before you send it home with a ratchet. Now it's done up, we'll send it home with the impact. And also what we found beneficial was there's a ratchet strap down here, just on the end here, just to pull it up and in a little bit so we can get these in started nice and easily. Beautiful. Now, you might want to check these tension just with a ratchet and uh, it's wheeled back on time. So here's what's left of the CV. And as you can see, it's about half of the inner left. Now, to get these things out, we couldn't really see well before, is jam two screwdrivers behind it and lever it out. That's the easiest way to get them out. And of course, you'd be left with the outer of the CV. So all that's left now for us to do is to tighten up those wheel nuts. So guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you'll get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.